to build this terrible looking application, right? This, this is my skill with React.js and CSS and HTML. But what it is, and it will be hopefully quite exciting, it's an application where we all will be able to tweet with a particular hashtag. Um, I, I'll suggest the Scala. And, you know, the, we'll tweet an image and this system that we're going to build today is going to recognize what is on the image and, you know, optionally, who is on the image. So I've trained it to recognize uh, a few things, um, salad, beer, cake, and laptops. So I think salad is out. Uh, hopefully you'll have laptops. So we'll be able to take images, take pictures, and see what's on them. And I've trained it to recognize a few people. Um, and so if we're lucky to have someone uh, who looks like, say, Helena Edelson and a few other people, then it will recognize them. And it will be the usual combination of Akka in Scala, of course, Kafka for messaging. We will try deep learning for J to do the, the image processing and recognition. We're going to throw in some Lagom microservices as well, just so we can all look at how horrible Java really is. And so we won't have to do it again. Um, run it in Docker, uh, the usual, usual setup, right? You shouldn't hopefully find it too surprising. Okay. So now, proper microservices. Um, how are we going to construct it? Well, we go from some source of data and we will have an ACA cluster that does some processing. We will have a queue in the middle. Um, in our case, a rabbit in queue. We'll have, you know, in, in, in general, we have some other collection of services. And then we have some SIP, right? So this is a, a stream of data that flows through our system. Um, now, just to give you a brief introduction of, of Kafka, um, because we'll be relying heavily on some of its features. So, on, on you know, uh, from 10,000 foot point of view, uh, this isn't too complicated. We publish a key value pairs, if you like. And the key can be, you know, whatever we define, whatever we decide. Um, and value is, as far as Kafka is concerned, it's an array of bytes. And we, our application is responsible for dealing with it in some way. And I'll get into details, but, but, but in general, right, we send a message to Kafka, we send a key value pair, uh, we can send as many as we like, and then it is delivered, that same message, that same key value pair is delivered to the same consumer groups. So if I have consumer group A and consumer group B that subscribes to the same topic, then they will see the same messages. Okay, so far so good, right? Now, of course, in, in, in Kafka, we have to think about the parallelism up front. So we define the partitions, which in turn define how many messages, I'll say in parallel, there are some terms and conditions that apply to it, will be processed. So, you know, this is a, a trivial example. We have a Kafka topic, and on that topic we've produced, we've put three messages, you know, the, the square and the circle and the turned square. And again, depending on how we set up the partitions, that drives how they are delivered to the consumers. So consumers receive, you know, connect to these partitions and they uh, consume messages from, from the queues. Okay, so how is it all done, right? So, so far, so good. It seems like any other queuing system. Well, one of, the, one of the differences is that Kafka doesn't confirm, so, so the consumer, right, when it receives a message, it doesn't confirm delivery of each message, it confirms an offset. Now, that, that becomes a lot more interesting. So offset, think of offset as, as just a number into, um, like a pointer into the stream of messages. And so if I send these four messages and this particular consumer consumes two of these, the circle and the square, it will then confirm 
the offset. It doesn't confirm that I've received a circle and a, and a blue square. It confirms I've received two messages. So, so the offset is now two. And so Kafka will move this pointer that says, oh, okay, well, I have an offset. And so the next consumer, the next block of data that will be delivered to the next consumer will start from that offset. Okay, excellent. So let's let's work through a couple of really 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 trivial examples, and we'll we'll practice them in code. So, in the simplest scenario, um, the caveat. Okay, let me begin. Caveat is we don't want to lose messages, right? We want to, for sure, process a message. And so, in in the simplest scenario, Kafka manages the offsets. And the microservices, you know, the code that receives it, commits once its work completes, right? And all of the processing, everything that happens, is done in this message handler. So what we're saying is, within the timeout that's necessary for confirmation, we are able to do all this work. Now, of course, you could, this trivial microservice implies that the begin work completes Quickly, you know, you want it to complete well within um, the, the, the confirmation timeout. First, you don't want Kafka to be re delivering the message because the confirmation wasn't delivered on time. And second, you want your system to be as lively as possible, right? So, so it's really important to consume messages in a reliable way and then to move on as quickly as possible. But, but, if your scenario really is that you can consume, you can do the work, and you can do the work very quickly, well within um, the timeout that's necessary for confirmation, do this. It's nice and easy. But, you know, um, suppose that's not quite possible. So this is a second case scenario where you receive a message, so like so, you know, you receive the payload from the message or messages, right? So, so you have, you know, the blue circle, blue square and uh, the green circle. You receive two of those, but the processing of those messages would be too long, right? You can't actually achieve that within the, the orange square in the code. But what you can do is to persist this payload, the, the command, really, uh, in the microservices journal. <laughs> And once you have persisted it, you can then confirm to Kafka and say, look, I have it. I have consumed the message. I have written to my journal. I will process it. And then this work, you know, these, these events that will be handled, um, they're handled either from the journal or, in this particular case, we're using the local ACA at least once delivery. And again, we'll practice that in code. Okay, final scenario is perhaps the most complicated, right? So what you could also do is to say, well, you know what, I, I don't actually want Kafka to be managing these offsets on my behalf. What you can do in this scenario is to persist in each microservices journal, not only the messages, but also the offsets. Remember, the offsets are just numbers. So it's perfectly reasonable to forget that, right? If you've seen the animation, it was really cool. So burn the offsets and say to Kafka, don't worry, we have it. And so when this microservices starts up in, in a bit of pseudocode, we will start consuming from the offsets that we have last written to the journal. So we can, when we receive a payload, we, of course, extract the payload from the messages that we have received, but we save into our journal not just the command that we have from Kafka, not just the messages, but also the offsets that point to the, mess to the records that we have now received. And the handling of it is then exactly the same. Right? We don't have to change that. Now, you will see that this is actually what Lagon does internally. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that's done, and it's done in actually fairly neatly, even though it's Java. All right, so 
So here's what we're building. Now that you have the, the, the quick background, and I'm sure you, you guys were looking at this going, yeah, of course, this is Kafka. What are you talking about? We know this stuff. Anyway, it was a refresher. So here's what we're building. We have how many? Five microservices. Oh, wow. So we have the ingest microservice that connects to Twitter. I have, I have there you go, Twitter, right? Everyone does Twitter. So we consume these tweets. Now, we publish them on a topic, and we have three consumer groups. We have consumer group, so in, in publish them on, on, on the tweet image topic. We have th three, like, the text, scene, and identity. We use Cassandra, obviously, for the journal. We have Lagom for the text microservice, just so we can practice. So this is um, OCI. And scene and identity, well, that's, that's our deep learning computer vision code. So it will tell us what's on this image, and identity, of course, it will tell us well, who's on the image. And then finally, we have a dashboard that shows the images um, in our React.js application. So, um, again, it, it's what you would have expected, right? We have a tweet image topic, which is where we put the images that were in, in the tweets. And then we have three consumer groups. We have the text group, where we can have as many instances of the text microservices we like. We have the scene group, which again has um, some number of the scene microservices, uh, matching the number of practitions, as you, uh, as you would expect. And then we have the identity group that again, um, you know, receives and manages the offsets for the, um, for the same tweet image topic, but it's a, another group of microservices. They all publish their results on the text, scene, and update identity topic. The dashboard service subscribes to all three, and it publishes messages out. Right, now, I said that Kafka, as far as Kafka is concerned, the payload is just an array of bytes. It doesn't really care what's on it. Now, we could just do Java serialization. And this is where you should all leave, right? This guy just doesn't have any idea. Uh, so we're not going to do that, don't worry. We're going to use a much more formally defined protocol and we're going to use protobuf for it. So now, if you think about this, there is an argument that says every message that travels through your reactive system through these microservices, it, it, it makes sense to package it in an envelope and the envelope has things like the version of the payload and posting timestamp, ingestion timestamp, correlation ID, what have you. Because in, even though this is not the case in the system that we're building here, but you could imagine that if this is uh, you know, a very complicated system, you would want to have other microservices that aren't interested in the payload. Right? So you could build uh, a billing component that simply cares about the, the envelope, the number of messages that you have processed, but it doesn't actually need to see the payload because the payload is actually the unwrapped message that's packaged inside the envelope. And so, you know, you have the ability to control the versioning of the payload and control the, the, mess, the kind of payload that goes in the envelope. So you will definitely find that, find that helpful and we'll see how that's done in code. In any case, um, looking at the topics that we have, we have a tweet image topic where the payload is simply the array of bytes that make up the image, you know, the, the, the JPEG bytes and the PNG bytes and whatever. Then we have the topic called text. The payload on that is a text message. We'll see the definition of it in just a moment. On the scene topic, we have the scene message, which again is defined and in some richer way, identity is, is the same, same deal. We're going to practice three, well, uh, okay, so, so two general groups of, of sending and delivery, but there will be details. So from the ingestion microservice, we'll do just fire and forget. On the text microservice, we will have at least once, scene will do at least once, identity will do at least once, but it will do it in the three ways that I've described a moment earlier. So, 
all the processing within the message handler, then we will have local persistence of just the commands, but Kafka manages the offset. And finally, we will manage the entire thing, so the messages as well as the offsets. How that's how that's done. You've seen the formats, so I've hinted at this payload. Now, again, if you've never seen protobuf, hopefully this isn't too alien. You now we have some integers, we have strings, and we have an array of bytes. So the text microservice that simply returns an array of string called areas. So this is the repeated string areas. So that translates to a sequence of strings. Not, not too difficult. The C microservice, that returns slightly more complicated <coughs> object, right? So for every C, we say that we can have multiple labels attached to it. And a label is, is a richer object. It has the actual label. What is it? You know, is it a salad? Is it a beer? Is it a laptop or a cake? Um, but we also have score. And then the scene message, when we receive an instance of it, has an array or a sequence of label, and it's called labels. Uh, finally, if you dig deeper into what uh, Protobuf can do, it can do stuff that we are comfortable with in Scala, right? It, it has um, a simple union type. So a face, in this case, is in Scala speak a sealed trait, and there are two instances of it. It, it. There is an identified face, someone we know, or an unknown face. And, you know, the sequence of faces that we have is um, either an identified face or an unknown face. It's exactly what you would expect in Scala. Internally, and I won't get any further into this, of course, if you write messages into your journal uh, in ACA, so the, you know we're talking ACA persistence, it's important to stick to the same rigorous formats. Right? So, so now that you have Protobuf, it's it makes sense to stick to it and to describe everything that's that ends up in our journal as Protobuf messages, and then to use the, the appropriate ACA serializer to write to our ACA persistence journal messages in the right format. So it makes sense to define everything as you see. All right, so you know what, enough slides. Let's, let's code. This, this, this was quite enough. So here's what we have. We have, our, we have our big project, and what we're going to start with is the ingestion layer. So we'll receive some messages from Twitter, and what we want to do is to start processing. So let's get on with it. So in main, so I have ingest. So you, you should be able to hopefully see this. Hey, wave if yes. No one's. Oh, you're waving. Excellent. All right. So. Um, Okay, well, let's start simply, right? We're going to track, this is the, all the tweets with the Scala um, hashtag, okay? So, so how do we go about it, right? Well, let's first make an OAuth request. Um, so it's the usual Twitter uh, OAuth mechanics. I have defined this application um, in Twitter, and I have a file I'll show you here. So I have this consumer key and access token. Um, enough, you know, you don't, I don't want you to copy it, you'll have to uh, create your own. But this, this is how it works. We will make an award request. What we will then get is a result of the entity header. We'll pull out the header and then we will do the ingestion. Now, I see, I mean, map and for each. Remember, these are all futures. So create authenticated request returns a future of request with info. And so what I then want to do is pull out just the HTTP header 
but but this this thing here, of course, would now be a future of HTTP header. I want to execute it. I want to get the value of it. Um, though I don't want to see the values. I mean, I don't want to return any result. So hence I have for each. And here's the ingest function that takes the source and the body of the request that will make it to Twitter, and it receives the, the HTTP header. And so it can all be written as a future of HTTP header, map, pull out the value of the authorization header, and then consume. All right, so now that we have the OAuth header, we can construct the HTTP request. And this is IntelliJ idea. Don't, don't panic. Um, so we'll construct the HTTP request for Twitter streaming, and we will receive a stream of posts, I mean, the you know, stream of tweets, bodies of tweets, um, that we need to consume and start processing. So let's do just that. OK, at HTTP, we get a single request. Rather, we get a future of this HTTP response. If it is a 200, then we're looking good, right? So Twitter has said, okay, yeah, there you go. Now I will be sending this as a long-running stream of data. And so we can start consuming the response, or rather the entity of the response. Now, that's the stream. You know, it, it is because of what I said, right? Twitter will now start sending tweets as they arrive with, according to the hashtag that we have defined. And so we can't have a strict response because we wouldn't have enough memory for it. This is a never-ending stream. So it's the usual trick of delimiting, you know, consuming the stream, buffering you know, chunks of memory. So we'll scan until we hit an, a new line, which typically indicates one JSON, end of JSON. We will parse it, so we will get this simplified tweet format um, I'll show that to you in just a minute. And then for each of these smaller chunks, now that we have the tweet, we will send it to our simplified tweet processor actor. All right, simplified tweet format.parse. Uh, we're going to do just a, a trivial JSON manipulation. Uh, the tweet, if you've ever looked at it, is a massive, complicated JSON. But as far as we're concerned, we just really care about the media. So these are the media URLs that point to these uh, images that people have taken with their, with their Twitter, uh, with their tweets. So um, what do we do with it? Well, we send it to the simplified tweet processor act. Um, oh, right. So what we need to do, remember, these simplified, these media URLs, they're well, URLs of, of images that we have to download, but we have to do the, the downloading. So let's do that. Um, like so. So, when we receive a simplified tweet from here, we will take all the media URLs and we will you know, make an HTTP request to it. Now, again, in HTTP, in, in Aka HTTP, um, Everything likes to be a stream, except what we're saying here is it doesn't, for us, for this particular case, it doesn't make sense to stream the contents of the image or the JPEG or the PNG. And so we have a too strict function. So instead of having a stream of bytes, we will want to consume the entire array of bytes as a stream, of course, giving some time out. Because now we have to wait. I will say, OK, I'll make a GET request, and some bytes will be arriving, but I need to know when to stop. And that's the time I'll be willing to wait here. One second. Now, once I have seen the entire entity, I'll send a message to self, which is the tweet image, and off it goes to our tweet image um, Kafka topic. So, all right. So we, we are producing images. We're producing bytes that make up the image. So here, if you look at the content, that really is just a byte string. It's the things that we have consumed by downloading the tweet. So where does it go? Well, all right, all right, okay. 
Now we want to identify it. What's on it? So let's try. Let's see. Um, so I have a, I have a, let's let's just let's like let's, let's practice. This will be fun. So we have seen classification. I have a test. So I have some images. So beer and a cake and the laptop and a salad. Of course, the idea is that once we have this code, what we would like to be able to say is, we throw this image at the classifier and it should say, well, that's a salad. And it should say a laptop and a cake and a beer. So let's write such test. Okay, let's hide this. Uh, don't worry, so, so I have kept these uh, models, trained models, uh, on my machine, but I will share a location of an S3 um, bucket so you can download these trained contents. They take a long time to train, and they're quite big, but you can have a go. All right, so let's run this. How hard can it be, right? Um, hey, I'm running, it's a good job I don't have the Mac with a touch bar because then I wouldn't be able to press F10. Okay, so here we go. Okay, this is taking a moment, but that's okay. It's a 99 megabyte um, parameter file for this deep net. Okay, so I'm not sure if you guys are seeing this red text, but that's not good. So, Scala experts, what's not good? I'll, I'll, I'm scanning, right? You can tell me what's not good. As soon as you see it, start waiting. Any, any, any tips? I'm sure you can see, oh, wow, well, this is my favorite. Of course, right? The implementation is missing. We still need to code. And we need to code this. <laughs> so, what, will, what, we are, what we are using here is deep learning for J. And so, we're going to take the input stream of an image as a row vector of, of the bytes, well, rather, pixel values, RGB values that make up the image, we're going to resize it to a specific size, because again, we have trained our, our continent to uh, expect an image is of a certain size, we can't just throw any number of any uh, any number of elements at it. We will make a prediction, and I mean this this is, we know it's a row vector, but you know, just, just in case. So in the row vector, we're going to get a vector, in this case, of four elements. The element, the first element of the vector is the probability of that particular input being the first label. The second element of that vector is the probability of that element being uh, the second label and so on. And so we have an index into these labels uh, which are given to us as an array of, of strings. So we can, we can make these predictions. So let's run it again. Now that uh, we've completed this code, I hope that this is going to do what we expect. So remember, we're throwing all these images at it, so we're going to, we're loading the resources, these images, from our uh, project settings, and we're making the predictions, and it all worked. So, yay, excellent. What we are able to say is that if we throw cake at our seed classifier, it responds back with, well, this is a cake. <coughs> so we're smiling. This is good stuff. So let's wire it into, suppose, a microservice. So what do we do? What do we do? Oh, okay, well, let's do scene classifier actor. What do we have to do? Oh, well, more, more question marks. We need to connect to this, this Kafka topic. We will be consuming messages from the Kafka topic, and we will be producing the responses to another Kafka topic. Right? So far, so good. So let's let's go. We'll load, construct the classifier just like we've done in the test. So far, so good. We will construct a consumer. So we have a consumer conf. Um, which defines, I'll show you what it defines, it defines a whole bunch of interesting things. 
Yeah. Uh, so you can see that the bootstrap service, so where is Kafka, what is the group ID, um, you know, how are we going to reset uh, offsets automatically and so on. So we get this configuration loaded and given to us. We will consume create, uh, create a producer in practically the same way and finally we're able to return, uh, I need to get rid of this, we'll be able to return a props of C classifier actor. Okay, so far so good, right? Um, again, you know, for those of you who use Eclipse, uh, you might find this magical, I could just type in VS3.4. Don't worry, it's exactly how IntelliJ IDEA programming is done anytime. I don't actually write any of this code. I just type these magical shortcuts. Uh, no, I don't. But anyway. Okay, so next up, we will consume consumer record. Now, this is where it gets a little bit complicated. So, wow, this is complicated. What is this stuff, right? So, let's think about it. We have received consumer record, so it's key value pairs. They contain an envelope, so far so good. We know that, that the payload of the envelope is are the bytes that make up the image in the tweet that we have just downloaded, so far so good. We have the scene classifier, so we can say scene classifier dot classifier, given an input stream that contains an image. Great. Now, we are able to construct a response. So we now have, um, you know, um, a scene object, which we are going to publish on the scene topic, on this line here, except what we really want to be sure that, remember, send here returns a future of record metadata. What we absolutely want to be sure that is that everything works, right? We want to, before we confirm the offsets to Kafka, in other words, all of this stuff should have worked. So what we have, let me see if I have the right line. So here, if you look at futures, futures, it's a sequence of future of record metadata. So what I want to do before I confirm is to first turn the sequence of futures into a future of sequences, and then on success of it, I want to confirm. So everyone sitting there, you should be going, yep, yeah, I know exactly what to write. So I, I hope I also know exactly what to write, so I can do that. All right, excellent. So we will flip a future of sequences, uh, sorry, we will flip a sequence of futures into future of sequences, and on success of all of those futures, we will confirm the offsets to Kafka. Excellent. So, so here you can see, right, this is, if you remember the, the, the slides, this is the simplest microservice. Right? So M, all the work that we're doing happens within the confirmation timeout. Now we can afford to do it because this code here is actually really, really quick. We can get this done in just a few milliseconds. Fantastic. So let's now deal with something a bit more complicated, which is the identity matcher actor. So this is a slightly more complicated beast in that, first of all, um, it, the identifying of the faces is complicated. We can't actually get it done in time that we have to confirm. So we have to do something different. We have to extract the payloads from the message that we received. And then what we're going to do is to persist it, the payload that we have just extracted from Kafka, into our journal. Now, once we have persisted, we will have, this is where it gets even more complicated, we want to do at least once delivery locally in this particular actor system. So once we have set up this at least once delivery locally, we can then confirm to Kafka that we have received the offset. Now, just, I'll, I'll show you, I'm sure this, this won't be a surprise, but it is tempting to do this. See what I've done? I've moved the sender to the line below. Um, and it is tempting because you read this code and this, this call, persists. 
looks like a synchronous call, but it isn't. Of course, this is all asynchronous. So, and if you don't, yeah, I'm, you, you look like you don't believe me, but okay, let's have some look, right? So it's like the first word of the scale that it says, asynchronous. So don't, don't be fooled. Uh, if you write your code like so, you might actually confirm the offset before you have persist them, persisted the events in your local journal, which might mean that you lose messages. Because this, this could fail, but hey, you know, you've already confirmed the offset. So everything has to happen in here in the in the callback that's applied to persist. Because this code runs when persistence is happening. All right. Now, handle identify faces. This is where we actually write the code that identifies the faces. Now, you think, oh, okay, this is, now this is complicated. Why on earth are we doing actors, you might say? Why indeed? Um, I'll, I'll show you one reason. Um, you, you can give me 50 other reasons, but I'll show you one that's actually quite important. Before we identify the faces on, on the tweet, on the image, we extract them. So we need to identify you know, the, the rectangles that contain the faces. How do we go about it? Well, it's the combination, it's the usual approach, uh, as usual. It's we're using hard cascade, uh, uh, cascade classifier. Well, I haven't written it in Scala. Some good people have written it in OpenCV. Now, who's used, hands up, who's used OpenCV uh, and OpenCV with Java? One or two, okay. Um, what can you tell me about multi-threading with OpenCV? Um, yeah, don't shout, it's like false, it's terrible. And so now that we find ourselves inside an actor, we can say, oh, well, actually, this is now giving me same threading guarantees. If I, when I didn't use this inside an actor, particularly this call, detect multi-scale, in a multi-threaded environment, it failed. Right? It, it set faulted. Now you could say, oh no, no, we're cool, we're Java programmers, we'll fix it. Okay? Wow. Um, well, good luck, because it starts with public native void. So if you use the, the, the Java interface to open CV, uh, you end up calling some native uh, C shared object. So you can't fix it. Now you could synchronize all of it, but that kills your throughput. Um, but hey ho, we find ourselves with inside ACA, and so we get some same threading guarantees. Okay, well, let's move on. One last thing, uh, just so I'm not stopping you from having your coffee. We are in a microservice world, right? and the idea of microservices is that we can choose the right implementation for any microservice that we like. Now, suppose we have a team that says, I don't want to do Scala. Scala is just this terrible idea. Um, I want to do Java, but I want to do some cool Java. So let's do Java with Lagon. How about that? So we're going to write a text service that does uh, you know, OCR, the image, but we're going to do it in Lagon. So we'll consume messages uh, from Kafka, we'll do the usual processing, and we'll produce responses out. How do we do it? Well, okay, this is just a very, very, very brief tour of Lagon. So first, we will say that we have a service, a text service, um, with a name that will publish messages on the topic called text um, with a particular message serializer, because we still want to use the, the protobuf infrastructure that we've set up. Now, Lagon, by default, actually takes care of not just persisting the messages in the journal, but also persisting the offsets in, in Kafka that it receives from Kafka. In fact, Lagon goes as far as to say there is no ad hoc publishing of messages. Everything that you do in Lagon is to consume a message from, from Kafka, write it to your journal through a persistent entity, and then the responses, so if something is meant to be published out onto another, another topic, it is published as a subscription to a stream of events from a journal, which gives us local back pressure, but it controls everything. 
And Lagon takes care of actually managing all the offsets, managing the confirmation and resubscribing to Kafka in case of failures. So let's write some code. Uh, da, 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 da. Constructor, usual bit. Now you say Java is horrific, right? But we're modern. It's a JDK 8. So we have a stream and we have Akka stream. Um, and Akka, um, Akka stream, which we construct by mapping to a function. So again, it doesn't look as pretty as, as Scala, but it is actually perfectly reasonable. The text topic we'll define here is simply. So this, see, this is interesting. The, the topic producer we subscribe to an event stream from our journal with offsets managed by by Lagon. So no ad hoc publishing. Everything is handled locally with back pressure through a journal. Now the actual processing is relatively simple. So what do we do when we say do extract? Right? So this is the flow that we receive through extract. We'll take the text entity command that we will send to the text entity um, the system to text entity, specific entity, and it looks like this. So if I look into it, the main thing to look at is the initial behavior. And uh, it almost looks like the receive method of, of an actor. Right? So we create an entity that defines some behavior, and then when it, it receives a message, it does something, uh, it can persist things into a journal and return other behavior. So this is precisely what Akka receive looks like. And it's actually backed by an actor. All right, we're running out of time. Let's have a look back into Scala. The dashboard sync actor, sync actor. So this is the stuff that receives the messages. Uh, if you remember the diagram, we're doing, um, you know, at most once delivery. So we're doing horrific thing. Well, uh, horrific. I mean, we're okay, right? We said we're fine with at most once delivery. And so we simply take the consumer records. We'll publish them into our local event stream, and it will immediately confirm. So what we're saying is, this can fail. What can happen is that we have consumed a message, confirmed an offset to Kafka, but this node has crashed. Um, but we say that we're fine with it. Finally, let's define a route for it to handle WebSocket messages, because this is what we'll have our um, Topic subscribe. All right. Uh, Jan, Thanks sorry to interrupt you. Do you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, uh, we were eating into Noel's uh, session, so if you can cut it short and just, you know, speed it up a bit. <laughs> yep, that's all right. Sorry. We're okay. nearly done. We're nearly Thank done. you. Okay, so let's go here. We have everything running, so I'll open a few more terminals. Excellent. All right. So what do we need? Um, let's uh, Docker compose our infrastructure. So what we want to do is the CK of the Smack stack. So Zuki or Kafka Cassandra. So I'm going to start all of this stuff. Um, we are using Cassandra, of course, for, for the journals, the microservices. We have Kafka to do the messaging. And the reason why we're doing it in this complicated way is because I want to show you how to start the services manually. So let's wait for this to settle down. All right, so this, this is looking hopefully good. So here, SBT, and here, SBT also. So this is all looking good. So let's see, let's see. In project. At IT, we will run. So this is going to 
deal with the gesture microservice, it's going to start the dashboard service, uh, but of course it's not doing the OCR just yet. Uh, which we can do here. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Run all in Lagom. Now, while this is doing stuff, looking good, this is looking good. All right, here we go. Local. You stop moving. Oh no, you're moving again. Take to your Twitters and tweet some images with the hashtag BBScala. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one more. So, oh wow! Look at that. Uh, so you're tweeting and I'm receiving the messages. This, this is the truly distributed system. You're sitting in Slovenia, tweeting some images. The obviously the content is getting it wrong, but that's the idea. It's not to have perfectly accurate. Work. Oh wait a minute! No, this is my integration test. Um, so you're not, we're not consuming the real messages, we're <laughs> consuming stuff that I have practiced before. Um, anyway, I, I, won't, I won't break it. As you can see, we are posting quite a few messages. This is simulating 100 people tweeting at the same time. Um, we'll go back to it. Um, and you can all do that on, on this simple machine. And uh, just to give you an idea of the load that we are creating, and this will be my last thing. Ah, uh, mouse. Go back to this. Get rid of this. So, in terms of what we're doing to the machine, um, we're actually giving it a fair run for its money. So, if I see all just my processes and our Java processes. We order it. Come on. I will leave you. My processes. So here are our Java processes, which are actually getting some fair whack. So if you look at how much we're, we're giving the machine, this is exactly what you want to see. And I'll stop it now because your picture is breaking up very badly. So. Um, Stop that. One minute left. So, thank you again for very. Thanks again. Thanks for your attention. Thanks for bearing with me. So, sorry, Jan, to, to break up your presentation, but we are on tight schedule. Yeah. Um, thank you again. So I'll tweet, final slide, no, you know what, enough of slides, you don't want to see it. I'll tweet a pointer, uh, a link to the code and the blog post that describes what I've just, uh, I've just told you and the slides. So thanks again, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.